Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunzenith.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store, where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Hey, hope you're enjoying the content. A huge thank you as well just to my patrons quickly, not only those who currently support me, but those who've been part of the Zenith in the past. It's a pretty phenomenal feeling to be supported by other players, not just in the Maverick or Legacy sphere, but those who just enjoy Magic content. My content will never be behind a paywall, and these patrons allow that to continue to happen. You may have also noticed I've stopped adding ads during my YouTube videos, and that's not just a quality choice, but also a direct outcome of having people support me through platforms like Patreon, doing a nation deck list. So a huge thank you to you. Uh, I love what I do. I love being a community member of the Maverick and even Depths communities, the, the wider legacy community in general, and it's a privilege. So thank you. All right, let's get back into it. Hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with a take on Green White Depths from Jono Yannick, aka Dreadnought33, who recently trophied with this list, which is really cool to see. Big shout out to Jono, he's been on the stream many times, a good magic friend, and has a really cool take on the list. Obviously being Green White, you're not playing Red or Black, so you do have some extra slots to play around with, and Jono's gone for a Saga build. So here we do have a copy of Urza Saga and then a Shadow Spear as a target alongside the Mox Diamonds. Although we only have one Saga, we can of course make copies of it with Stage, which is nice. Uh, we also run a Basic, so we can do the Stage Saga Basic Land combo where you can essentially create a forest that always taps for a construct, which is pretty sweet. Uh, we also have Legolas's Quick Reflexes, which makes a lot of sense in this sort of deck, running the full playset of Elvish, Reclaimer, and Knight, as, as normal, I would say. Uh, when it comes to Depths, any version typically runs the full four swords, the four Reclaimers, the four Knights, at least three Moxen, at least three Crops, the Safekeeper, uh, usually at least one Endurance. I would say some decks do cut the Outland Liberator or Ramanap. Uh, we also have a Besaju in this deck to take care of artifacts and enchantments, which is cool. We can't find it to put it into hand through cards like Sylvan Scrying, which you might see out of uh, Rainbow Depths or the Faster Decks, or Expedition Map, which you might see out of decks like Cloud Post, or sometimes a, uh, a really fast Turbo Burst version. But still a, a pretty great card, obviously. We do also have Once Upon a Time, which is... Pretty fascinating. I haven't played once in a Depths deck as of yet. It makes sense as you do take advantage of both sides, being both a creature and a lands strategy. So I can see why that is in here. And then, yeah, it's just nice to not really worry about a third color because sometimes in Depths you can have issues with the mana base, uh, especially when you're running three colors and also cards like Stage and Depths and Wasteland. Uh, you're going to run into some tricky, pretty tricky issues when you don't have the Mox Diamond starts. So running just two colors is really nice. The board is pretty clean as well. Uh, three Force of Vigors, which I really like now. I know Strass Daddy, Mark Strassman is also on this as well for Punishing Mav or his Punishing Saga Mav. Collect Oof, still probably the, the best hate bear in Legacy when it comes to Green Sun Zenith. We have two more Endurance and a Fairy Macabre. Oh, we did have a fairy. It's gone. Uh, for graveyard strategies, and also, like, obviously, Endurance is a pretty big house versus Delver as well, which is a really nice overlap. Fairy Macabre, pretty interesting because it can be found with Once Upon a Time, which is nice. You don't need to hold up mana for it. And a lot of the combo decks don't care about more than two cards in the graveyard. So if you can take a reanimate, uh, so target, if you can take a loam, if you can take out the lands you really care about when they are casting a loam potentially. Really happy with Fairy. Gato Teague has seen a, a bit of an increase in play. Some versions also playing more than one. I do like just having at least one in the 75, especially against some of the more controlly 
uh, four or five color decks with things like Prismatic Ending, Leyline Binding, Supreme Verdict or Terminus, uh, Fourth Erolingus, maybe Minskin Boo. It turns off a lot of hate removal and also a lot of win conditions, which is cool. Teague also just still fighting against a lot of the combo decks as well, so happy to see that. Torporob, you might have seen Hushbringer in some lists. Torporob is very similar, uh, although it can't be hit by sorts of plowshares, which is nice. Also, a few decks that care about it do have ETB effects that deal with Torporob, like Skyclave Apparition, so uh, it also can't be hit there, which is nice. Path, just a really nice removal spell, I believe, at the recent uh, American... No, sorry, at the European Eternal Masters, it was Tugores playing Green White Depths, and I believe he had a, a full play set of parts in the side, but it's just extra removal. Veil of Summer, also key. Uh, a card I don't play around with too much, but when I get it in a list where I'm playing the exact 75, I also really enjoy seeing it because I know how powerful it is. Uh, like, in response to Grief, it's obviously very good. Uh, there's still some Storm decks that do target with cards like Tendrils. I'm not too sure about the counter magic matchups like Delva or other blue decks if it's worth bringing in Veil. I would think so. It really depends on sideboarding. It really comes down to is Veil more impactful than a card in the main deck. Uh, so something like obviously Outland Liberator against a Delva deck isn't great. So having the Veil there is nice. And then Chasm is a card that has been in and out of sideboards as a crop rotation target. I assume here it's because of the uptick in Turbo Muxus decks and being able to crop for this uh, is pretty essential to, if you can't win the race, at least uh, halting the race until you can win the race. A little bit of a, uh, a rabbit and hare situation. So a rabbit and hare, a tortoise and a hare. What am I saying? Uh, that's pretty much it. Pretty keen to see how this goes. I do think Shadow Spear is actually a really nice addition to the list because a lot of the matchups these days that are creature based do come down to combat and being able to make combat damage a little bit tricky for opponents is always really nice. Uh, getting out of bolt range or getting out of a multitude of three against Delva can be pretty huge as well. So even a, a swing for one life is really nice. That's it. Let's get into a league and, and see how it goes. Uh, we are playing a league with green white depths of play points, gameplay. Nice. But yeah, it's always cool to see non three color versions of depths running around. A little bit easier on the wallet. It's cool just to see it as well if you do have, like, say, green white maverick and you want to build a depths deck. You don't need as many cards to switch over. If anything, really just the combo and crops like let's quickly have a look here i mean most people have a bog but like yeah i would say if you have green white maverick then building this deck isn't too far away uh a pretty nice hand here we have the outland liberator so we could probably pitch the Versage to the moxon uh and then play a flagstones uh, for the Reclaimer. We could also hold up the Mox until, say, turn 2. There's no real reason to play it on turn 1. So I, I don't mind that. Probably just going to get a Savannah here because we do have the Mox in. Leyline. Ooh, okay. Well then. Does that change things? For me, that most likely means it's going to be a mono black style deck. So maybe just getting Outland Liberator into play here is best. We could also open up with just Beseju. Uh, Leyline also stops Flagstones, which is relevant here. But what do we really care about? They kept a six. actually a pretty good sort of monster play so there's a few things we can do here we can lead out on reclaimer and then play outland turn two with mox diamond back up unless they have some sort of opening with like thought seize. so maybe getting the liberator into play is what i want to do here so i think in that case i'm going to play mox pitch the flagstones 
It's tough though, because if we if we flip the Liberator on turn one and just attack, it's pretty sweet. Let's go. Let's go Mox Pitch Windswept. Play the Flagstones. Play the Outland Liberator. And now we have access to Beseju as well. Okay. That's going to be fine. I kind of hope they take the Reclaimer so that next turn we can just pass. Like attack and pass, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play this step as it is just a land drop. No snuff out for you. The one thing about playing this step is that we don't have access to double green yet, but I think that's okay. The trap breaker flipping is pretty nice because hopefully we get to deal with something like the ley line without actually spending a card to do it. Um. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Green suns. Okay. I kind of, what do I want to do here? I think we want to start moving towards Reclaimer. Quick think. Yeah. Uh, this creature can block or be blocked only by creatures with shadow. Cool. Two cards left. Saga's fine. So one thing you can do here, maybe not because of the Urborg actually, I could pop and hit the Saga before they can tap it for mana, but because of the Urborg they can just tap it for black I assume, so that doesn't come up here. Question is, do they have a, a, a playable spell here? They do. Bowmasters. Okay. Just casting it to not flip the Outland. That's fine. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Ah, sorry. There we go. Thank you, Lemma Boy. Apologies, I'll still in the deck tech. Hmm. Interesting spot. I kind of want to take out the saga, but I do have this quick reflexes, which is nice. I also really want to actually turn on Reclaimer. So I think here we're just passing. I don't want to open up some sort of trade for the Bowmaster. Okay. Um, 
they have two mana. I'm a little bit worried of Opposition Agent. I don't mind just passing back here. I really hope they block with all three. Because then we can use Reclaimer. Nice. To be fair though, we could also just get rid of a step for a step. So we want to put this at the front. I guess it doesn't matter actually. And then we can... Fetch up step. And give this pro black. Once is cool. Guess we attack first. Trigger and hit. Hmm. Could just be dried up here. Next turn we'll take out the Void Walker. I could have done it last turn to be fair, but here we are. Okay. Land. Hit reflexes. Attack. Trigger. Hit. Nice. Just to pass back. Okay. Swords is pretty good. Attack the lethal. The wedding on Beseech. Do they want the token around? Yeah, they do. I think just because of that, we wanted swords. Okay. Um, once could actually help us here. So if we find a wasteland, we can turn the reclaimer into a three, four. Boom. Yeah. And by that, I mean, we can fetch and then wasteland ourselves to get three lands. I guess there's already a dried harbor there as well, but. Okay. Mono black. Uh, I like the Force of Vigors and I like the Veils.
Hmm. Probably don't need the bog. I could see the wants coming out. Endurance doesn't do a whole lot. Unless they're also a version with like reanimate and the troll. I like the crops, I like the swords. Liberator obviously was fantastic there. Safekeeper. <laughs> Not that great in a version with uh, Orcish Bone Masters. Teague actually seems pretty good. Yeah, maybe something like this. Quick look. They're probably a helm deck, but like, is Oof worth it? Maybe. Maybe it's better than one reflexes. Maybe it's just like a nice, nice to have. I'm not sure if this is the grief scan build. We didn't see grief, but could be. Pretty happy to keep this. We have both colors, even without the fetch, which is nice. No thought sees, that's kind of cool. I think if that's the case, we're pretty happy just to play. Land, fetch, and just swords. Am I really that scared of it? Because it plays it. Like, they didn't have a thought sees that turn. They could have a him. But if we have these cards in hand while they him us. We're not too unhappy because all of these move towards the combo. I kind of just want to get get the, the Void Walker up the field. Also fetching there in case they have like an agent the following turn. Don't want to play into that too much. They also used a ritual on it to prioritize it, so there's Thoughties, which is fine. Yes, uh, Legolas's quick reflexes isn't in uh, Cardboard Live yet. I think they must have a, must have a bit of a delay because I know Minskin Boo as well is a card that uh, did take some time for it to get up, updated. Hmm. Okay. So here we have a few options. I probably don't mind wastelanding the saga and just green sunning for. I was going to say Dried Arbor. You could also not care about this, but I do care about it a little bit. It is 60 in the main, correct. I think I do want to hit this. And I... Th I kind of want to double spell here. Green Sun's Dried Arbor. And Beseju. Yeah. No Bowmaster. Interesting. Well, we can try to get around Bowmaster here. Nice. <laughs> Alright. Never been so happy to have a 2 2 Tridarbor. They don't pay for it. That's pretty interesting. Lagstones. I think Force of Vigor is probably a draw we really want to hit very soon. Mm. This could just be Beseech. 
What did they get though? Elm. All right, we get a turn. Oh. Sadly, that's just it. Hmm. I don't think Shadow Spear does anything. Yeah. Damn, too slow. I think we're happy just to run this back. And hope to hit one piece of interaction. I guess Ramanap isn't the greatest, but if they don't have the Leyline, it's pretty good. We also have a lot of interaction with Leyline usually, so. Green Suns for Oof would have been pretty strong as well. Yeah. Probably should have thought about that a little bit more. Yeah, my thought for the uh, Dried Arbor was it allowed us to potentially hard cast a Force of Vigor a turn earlier. But if the Ramanup's doing anything, we can just pitch the Ramanup to Force of Vigor, so that isn't really a great piece of reasoning. I actually don't mind this. Kind of want the extra removal. Um, okay. There's a few things we can do here. The sevens with the ley lines have been tough. I think we're just getting rid of the Sagi. I think we're definitely crop rotating again for a... Like I don't want them to get Loam... Uh, sorry, don't want them to get Helm into play. I think it's Saga. Like I think we go... Mox, Pitch, Dried Arbor. Play Saga. And then we could even just get rid of the savannah. Let's land. Nothing. Okay. Um, I think here we actually want to get rid of the saga. It's, it's tough though. So if we draw a land, then it's actually pretty good. Blackstones doesn't do anything with the Leyline in play, so maybe I should have attacked for the extra one. Nice. Uh, 
Um, I could get another saga. I could just get depth here. I think that's probably correct. And then, hmm, could get another mox. I think shadow spear is okay. Am I playing? I'm. Um, yeah, maybe it is just a mox. It's no big like shadow spear doesn't really matter. I don't think. But I do like just having the forest. Um. I'll hold up the reflexes. There's actually, yeah, I think I could. I could actually. I don't think it really matters. I don't think like attaching the shadow spear is going to change the game there. But I don't think holding up reflexes is that great either here. Okay. Wasteland gets there. A few, yeah, a few little things for me there, which just doesn't really, didn't really add up. Maybe they, I assume they had a uh, a helm in hand and they just had to get to the mana for it. Which can be a little bit tricky against a Dark Ritual deck, like once they find a, a black source. It could be very much online. But yeah, I think that's a great showing of how a card like Leyline can be quite disruptive and neuter threats, but it doesn't remove the threat. Maybe Goyf, but... Reclaimer still still deals one. Ramnap still deals two. Knight still deals two. Yeah, deck was solid. Didn't miss a color, which is nice. Saga came in handy, just to get some extra support in there. I do love the like light splash of Urza Saga. One thing to think about with the Saga build is end of draw step plays, because if you want to get a Saga, you can get it at the end of draw step through typically crop rotation or night as it comes in untapped comes in at the end of draw step with a trick with a trigger counter and then in your first main phase it triggers again so it kind of comes in a turn earlier or at least it speeds things up by a turn which is cool so you get your token the turn it comes down and then the next turn you get something like shadow spear which can really come up in in race situations especially delver all right i'm gonna play uh, this is pretty nice. The dried up is a little bit tough, but we do have a once to find a green source, and we just have the combo as well. six cards we find a yav which is kind of cool because it also speeds up this i 
I also like Depths here because you can just F6. Okay. Sure. I kind of like just going for another creature here. Honestly, could also go for Safekeeper. I don't mind. It's tough. This deck sometimes has Wastelands, but they didn't go for an Underground Sea, which makes me think they care about their mana a little bit. Like if they had, if they were going for like a Wasteland line, maybe they'd try to get the colors online ASAP, knowing they have the snuff out. This makes me think they don't want to see a Wasteland. We're definitely going to see if this resolves. They can't play Days, which is nice. A little bit tricky. Hey Charlotte Legacy League. I will always say stress daddy. Sometimes I do come on a little bit early while he's still streaming, which is unfortunate, but Hmm. So the what I'm trying to think of, I guess because we have the crop, we don't care about wasteland as much. So I don't actually mind the safekeeper here. Because if they have wasteland then not having an actual threat in play is kind of kind of lame, but I do like that we have the combo here and also access to uh, like instant speed crop. Probably could have used Safekeeper in response, but to be fair, if they had like a snuff out, they could just do it in response anyway, so. That's actually pretty nice. I actually really like that because that allows me to hold up crop rotation around days and gives me another land to play around with. Probably a Plains, just because it can't be Wastelanded if we want to get that online. we care about this Reclaimer here. Nice. Interesting. So they... That to me makes me think that they're playing a version with potentially snuff outs as their only removal. Maybe things like Dismember or Fatal Push, but don't have uh, Sheldred's Edict in the deck, because I think that's just it. I guess maybe they don't have a land or Edict in hand, and therefore can't draw two spells in one turn. Okay. Um, I like the Paths. I like the Veils. That's probably it. Hmm. Liberator is probably a pretty, pretty easy cut. The Reflexes are nice. Maybe they're better than the safekeeper. 
especially against the deck that I, I assume is running Bowmasters. Um, I do actually like the Saga in this matchup because it gives us tokens to play around Shieldred's Edict to some extent, if it does come to that, where the game goes a little bit long. I don't mind the Onces. Maybe I don't want, like, too many paths. I could see Crackers coming out. That's a pretty easy cut. Hmm. Maybe just the Endurance. They are running Reanimate, but so be it. Fair Macabre is actually pretty interesting. But is it good enough as a one-up with once? Probably not. Alright. Um, this hand relies pretty heavily on the once hitting, but we are in the draw as well, which I don't mind. Running red. Didn't see that coming. I will once in response just in case. Oh, ho, 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 ho. lucky. Lucky. That was. <laughs> I mean, if they're plan here is to grief us. We do have a pretty nice way to deal with it. Hey Spyman, thank you very much. Very cool. I know Brazil's got a lot of good players, which is always nice. They take the path, which is, which is interesting, because I guess they take the sword this turn. If that makes a lot of sense. Because we have both knights, I probably don't care too much about how we go about things here. I kind of like just playing the bog now to make mana a little bit better, but the bog this turn means we're probably casting the saga next turn, maybe, probably not, because of Wasteland. I think it is just, yeah. If we draw like a green sun to the top, we can green suns for one, which is nice. Seal of Fire. Okay. I guess that triggers Stalker, which is pretty funny. I like playing the crop, the uh, the Savannah here now with crop. That's really nice to have. Interesting they fetched, but then didn't do anything.
him. That's really interesting because they know about the veil. Hmm. Let them surveil. What a grief in the bin. Hmm. I kind of want a sword tier as well. Yeah, I think we rotate for Yav. It is a little bit tricky. play there was probably to use the crop again uh actually yeah we still can which is nice three four five six we got a five pretty much I think it's the DLC I care about because a fetch turns on Dried Arbor, which means we can double block this. They could reanimate Grief just to get another body into play. This is a deck with Bolt, which I'm a little bit scared about. Hmm. Do we have a way out of this? I don't think so. See if they attack with just one. I think the extra path will come in. Could be ramen app. Hey, Mistake, and a huge thank you for the sub. For the raid. Sorry, hope you're doing well. Hey, all those from Mistakens.
I am going to bring in the fairy. Yeah. Uh, let's have a quick sync. It could just be a... Oh, no, but once is good. It's tough, though, because to be fair, like... Okay, I'll play the 61. Uh, yikes, this is a... Mm, okay. This once has to do pretty well, though. So we'll keep in bottom. Probably a Reclaimer. And then try to find a fetch land with the once. Oh, yikes. I guess we play the steps so we can hold up swords next turn potentially. Stalker is definitely pretty interesting. It's a little bit slow, but I think the math on it, it beats Delver potentially. To be fair, I feel like like once is in the deck exactly for those sections, for those parts of play. Like the the chances of hitting a green source are pretty high, but again, it is just a chance. I think Wasteland here is better for us than trying to hit our opponent. Pedal. Wow, I didn't think of pedal. I don't mind just getting this off the board as soon as possible. At least if they try to wasteland the stage, we can copy a basic off the windswept heath.
The only real hit you hear is Sajiri step. We'll see if they want to copy this, try to hit the stage. Nice. So what we can do here is fetch for a basic, get the forest. And then while they can't play another wasteland here, we can copy the forest so it stifles the wasteland. This does give us some protection from something like a Thoughtseize, him, or another Grief. I only have one card left. Wow. I th I think we play into Wasteland here. I think we steal it. Kind of nice. It's kind of like where crop can just get there. But I think, yeah, the, the big line there was trying to force the wasteland. Like, I felt like my outs were definitely lower than my opponents. And so trying to make them make a mistake is where we could have got a little bit of, uh, of luck. So, yeah. It's always nice to, yeah, try to put your opponent in a spot where they can make a mistake. And then potentially that snowballs. And that's a pretty good example of it. But, yeah. I think one thing I can really work on is just like not giving up. Like obviously after that once upon a time you can get hit pretty hard like mentally. We are just like, oh. Okay. But just keep playing it out. You never know. You never know what happens. I'm never too sure against these sort of black bread scam decks if endurance or graveyard hate is worth it because typically they're going to see your hand first and therefore probably take the endurance or fairy before it resolves sometimes they can misclick and let the grief go to the graveyard before they get to see your hand but 
typically it's a case of like, do I rather than just take the endurance instead of an actual threat? I think we're just going to lead on Savannah Reclaimer. Opponent kept seven. Okay. Island Ponder, a great, a great island as well. Definitely my favorite island in Magic. Classic Mark Corbetas. So relaxing. It's like an actual like actual island. They chose to not shuffle. Mox. Um that kind of changes things. Like if they're on a combo deck, we I think we just want to go Green Suns for Dried Arbor. I'm, I'm thinking that they're going to be show and tell, so I really want to try to race them. So if we play Winter Peak here, Green Suns for Dried Arbor, we have one, two, three, four mana with the mocks. We still need to find a depth though. So potentially the play is just windswept pass maybe I do play the knight pitch heath play stage yeah I'm thinking if they have show and tell I want to put the knight into play I don't want to cast it so here I'm happy just to Fetch up. Let's have a quick think if I want to attack here. Dark Depths, Stage, Mox. So next time we have to draw land. Dark Depths, and then we have Stage, and then one mana, two mana. It, to be fair, it could also be something like a like Zeppelin Breakfast, and so holding up Bajuka Bog is key. But also with this start, I don't believe they can go off this turn. Volcanic. Okay. Well, now there's definitely options. I don't mind just getting Wasteland here. I guess we'll see if they have a Bolt. Fire. Okay. I could have played around that, to be fair. Krakus is kind of nice. Pitch Lorien revealed. Okay. I don't want to throw away the Moxon just yet. Or at least the Krakus, I should say. is really interesting. Okay. Interesting. Green Suns. I 
Yeah, I'm not really respecting days. And if, like, my thought is that they are, um, sneak and therefore putting the Krakus in the graveyard isn't great. I guess we do have the Ramen up. I guess we just hold up the combo here. It could even be a play of, um, Ramen up in Wasteland and then also use Green Suns. Yeah, there's no great way... yeah. I think we just present Lethal. I was thinking of like, potentially Outland Liberator, but it doesn't really change anything. Because... I guess we could destroy the sneak and then return the creature. Ooh. They're like a brazen borrower. Wow, they just said nothing. I think we could definitely replay that game one. Like, I think pretend, like, yeah. There's a lot of things we could do there. Uh, what do we like? We like the force of biggers. Teague's always a, an interesting one. I do like to collect the other uh, forces. I also like the parts over swords. Shadow Spear, Safekeeper for Bounce, Endurance can come out. The only upside of Endurance is that if it comes into play and your opponent plays Omniscience, you can do something with the trigger on the stack. That's not really worth it, but Jukabog. Yeah, Teague might be a little bit better than... Like the Onces aren't great. Torpor Orb's interesting. Stops Archon and it stops Traxa. I mean, like, Oof could be relevant. Let's see how this plays out. Orb seems pretty cool. Uh, we don't have a green source. <laughs> yeah, I think this one's just a little bit too risky. Like, it's very reactive, which is not what I want to be. Oh, we are in the draw, but again, not doing a whole lot. I like Path because we're winning via combat damage. I don't want to swords my opponent's creatures. It's a plan. I guess we keep the tough thing. This is the this is the really tough part about Teague is that if we play the Teague, we can't force it bigger. Uh, they usually bring in Magus and some list to play Archon. Is it too aggressive to drop one force here? I don't have a great way of controlling the mana, so I think Wasteland can go. I do want stage, so I think I'll drop a force. This way we have like Teague, we have a way to try to win, and then we also have some interaction potentially with Force of Vigor. interesting
I mean, if they have like a Fire Ice, I don't mind playing Teague next turn. And Step Brainstorm always makes me think they have like one part of the combo. Ah, Legolas' quick reflexes we could probably take out, to be fair. Play the Teak, so I'm scared. I'm more scared of Ancient Tomb into... Sneak. Could also play the Stage and then cast up the Dry Arbor to then, if we naturally draw into Dark Depths or... Crop rotation next turn, we just have the combo in line. I think Reclaim is a little bit too slow. I like the dried up, it turns on like Knight off the top, or it gets us closer just to Hardcast Force. Potentially even two spell on turn two. Pretty good. Okay. Oh, green suns. Hmm. I guess here I'm happy to go for a reclaimer. It'll still be a one two. I think we don't put anything in this turn, and if they put in Sneak, we can respond to the fetch. Okay. That's pretty good. Could upkeep search, but yeah. I don't mind going down on removal. The reflexes aren't great. Maybe it is just the onces. What does Torpor stop in our deck? Torpor actually stops nothing, which is kind of nice. Could be the Ramanap. Especially against their version. Playing a lot of basics. This does have a Saga start. I don't mind this, especially having the crop as well. We also have turn one Saga with Moxon. Which the Dryad play Saga. means we can crop it away if they I don't think I'd turn one moon but it's uh, nice to have Brotherhood's end actually lines up pretty well against this sort of start really want to they chose to shuffle which makes me really want to wasteland that folk but at the same time I want to get value up saga so like can we draw like a mox in here Veil. I don't think we have the luxury of just wastelanding here. Hmm. 
Okay. This is probably a spot where I wouldn't mind having a needle in the deck. But I guess Needle runs into Brotherhood Send as well. Yeah, I think we'll just hold the uh, the crop. Go for Shadow Spear. It's like a Stifle? Surely not. Uh, maybe just uh, using the mana before we potentially draw into a... Uh, Oh, it took Spear out, of course. This is kind of nice. Pushes them back on Brotherhood's end. Oh yeah, Mox is the only target. I don't mind cropping here the correct the uh, flagstones while I have the mana. Get Savannah. Okay, so they cast show until we can cast a veil in response to try to draw a card. Nothing. Yeah, I think the double cycle's also on. four cards that kind of makes me feel like they have some sort of like if I draw into a knight I'd probably rather have the, the veil up we could also green suns for three have the veil up okay yeah I, I, I really like having the veil here. Like one piece of the combo. Ooh. I hope they hard cast force.
I guess Legolas's quick reflexes would be quite good here, but... Now they have to find Force? Wow. Okay, well... That was... Yeah, I guess, like, it, the fire is kind of nice, because potentially we have a 2-2 two -two knight or a 1-2 knight. Yeah, it's tough. I wonder what their sideboard is. Like, maybe they just don't have enough cards to bring in that at least, at worst, it replaces itself. It may, it might, may even buy a turn. You could, like, end step ice and knight to make sure it can't, like, get crackers at instant speed, but I assume you just get crackers in response anyway. I would assume it's a sideboarding thing. Hits T, hits Oof, hits like Ethos from Cannonus. Does hit a lot of stuff. Heroic. Hmm. Little bit of a risky one in terms of mana. That I'm pretty happy to ship this. Have to keep this. Probably had a happy to bottom a windswept. Then we have like a bit of everything, especially flagstones with the reclaimer as well is quite nice. Ooh, maybe lands. Okay, saga, pretty nice. The saga starts are very impressive from lands against this deck. What are the chances that they have a prop rotation? Because that is a real consideration. Because if we play the probably forest here, play reclaimer, untap, we then have access to flagstones with crop, but then they already get a token off it. Maybe I'm supposed to see if they tap out off the saga first, because throwing this crop into a wasteland is pretty huge. But I think the play is reclaimer this turn. Flagstones next turn, crop away the flagstones, get the other basic, hit the cycle with Wasteland. I just want to have some good mana in the early turns. No attacks here. Could hit the stage but i want to hit the saga because i don't want them cropping it away for value or getting another thing i don't think i guess i could swords here like i'm, I'm probably swords in this anyway and we have crop for dark depths anyway so i think just using my mana effectively is good enough which honestly i guess that means i could have attacked yeah i think i, I, I should have thought about that a bit more for doing all of this, because that 3 damage is relevant. Wow, okay. I think we're only running 1 and 1, yeah. So I think here, honestly, we like just getting Savannah. 
and playing out the night. Which means I also get a free attack. Yeah, tough from them. What they didn't have was like an engine. They didn't have a loam, which is pretty huge, or an exploration. Obviously, exploration as well is kind of what you want with loam. Just very unfortunate for them. Uh, we like the endurances, the fairy macabre, the forces. Um, the parts are interesting. Like, I don't want to run the swords. I don't mind the parts. Typically, they run one forest. And obviously, giving them 20 life is pretty huge. Safekeeper can go. Reflexes is interesting, but probably not where I want to be. I think Path is better than Swords. I think typically, usually, it's a exile your creature, don't search for the basic that you have in play. Like, it's never great allowing them to like, you know, gain six or gain five off a token. I don't mind going down to one depths as well. 61. I really like the three forces just because you want to have it in your opening hand. It could just be two parts, to be honest. We have so many answers to both, uh, Urza Saga and Depths that I think just having like two instant speed effects outside of crop rotation for Wasteland or Caracas is, is good enough. This has a lot going for it. A little bit awkward with the double once hand, but I don't really want a mulligan against lands. Oh my gosh, I just pressed mulligan, didn't I? And this hand is terrible. Oh no. Oh no. Yikes. I don't think we can keep this, honestly. Three white with two tap lands. Oh no. That's not good. I guess, yeah. It's a challenge. We'll go to five. Okay, keep this bottom depths and then probably bottom the Sajiri step. If we really need to get to an extra mana, we can try to get a, uh, I was going to say flagstones, but that doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, but it's gonna be fine, honestly. If we draw like a, a force of vigor here, then an upkeep we can do it. No, this is probably the turn we play the dried arbor though. Can't cast a loam unless they yeah. Do they find a land? Yeah, okay. Wow, another wow, they're going for another sphere. Okay. I wonder here if then I just take out the saga with my crop. I kind of like that. I don't want to give them a 3-3. Three, three. I'm going to get rid of the dried arbor because it's open to a bit more.
That makes sense. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Another saga is unpleasant. Only the one arbor, correct. I guess we can go for Reclaimer here, right? Green Suns 2 for the Spheres and then 1-1. One, one. You get a 3-3, three, three, you get a 4-4. Four, four. They're potentially either Needle on Reclaimer. I wonder if they take the Spears out on the draw. A land into Knight is pretty solid. We then get to play a 6-6. Six, six. be weary of like a tax and then a bajuga bog potentially this could just be swords okay not the worst for three mana ram it up next turn get back like dried alba just jump lock ram it up wasteland as well it's true force of vigor pitch the endurance would be sweet oh my gosh So I think then we play Ramanap, Wasteland them, and then Force of Vigor is just two mana. Yeah, kill the tokens. Ah, we don't want to, yeah, we can't Ramanap. I guess we, can we Ramanap? No. Correct, map is five. Okay, that's fine. I'm glad they spent their turn doing this. All right. Nice.
Amigo. Yeah, this is where the spheres, because it's tough because like, I can see why they're on the spheres on the play, especially with Saga, but it's tough that Force Vigor runs into like both, both sides of it. They can't crop here either. Two mana. The Seiju? Nothing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh. Now that is actually hilarious. Yes, Lawrence, very true. Alright. Somehow, we are for it. I feel like I've definitely stumbled here a few times. Hey Strass, a huge thank you for the raid as we go for the trophy with uh dreadnought 33 aka john organix green white depth deck hope you're well welcome all those from strass daddy's uh stream i'm dukes on twitch you might know me as from previous decks as abzan maverick punishing maverick death and taxes abzan depths punishing depths thank you very much how'd you go what did you play against uh did you play anything spicy i know your question of the day is uh, are any of the spoilers so far, like, legacy playable? It's cool. Sadly, I don't think so. My big question is... Where is it? Would this card really be that absurd at one and at green? At two mana? Like... It doesn't feel like just for choose one as well like it that would that doesn't seem that overpowered to me like one in a green instant search your library for a creature card or land card and reveal it put it into your battlefield tapped kind of like a far seek but a bit better otherwise put it into your hand like the the fight ability is pretty much two mana anyway like prey upon is one i guess it gets a plus 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 one it would be yeah, maybe maybe I'm just being a little bit too uh, ignorant here about legacy and like this in other formats is, is obviously quite good. Yeah, like I guess like Besaju. I guess it's, it's kind of better than Disenchant because it exiles as well. So yeah, that's true. Okay. The mana's awkward. Is it good enough to keep with just the Moxon? 
we could bottom this step. I don't really want to play the bog for turn though. That's pretty tough. Maybe a little bit too awkward. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we... Like we could go Mox and then play this step so that we can untap and potentially play a Knight off the top. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yep, we just... Uh... Sorry, that was a huge fizzle. It's supposed to play the step, right? Yeah. Got him. Yeah, okay. We're just going to go full into our issue here. But to be fair, hopefully we can turn the Bajookabog into a uh, Flagstones and go from there. Hopefully it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Oh, Ancient Tomb. Okay. Simeon. Oh, this isn't too bad because if we draw a Swords to Plowshares, we have a way out of this. And we can crop for Depths. Oh, and the Fury. Okay. That makes things a little bit troublesome. But now they're down to just the one card. Okay. Um... I think just from a turns perspective, we probably just want to hold the crop up here for a basic. I guess we could also just turn the Jukebug into a basic, right? Play Safekeeper. I I don't mind that. Hmm. Thanks, Lauren. All the best. Hope you're well. Yeah, I think we just want to get... Especially if they have like a Chalice, I'd rather get this into play. I mean, there's also a world where if we draw into... Depths or Dried Arbor, we can get there. That's interesting. Um, hmm. I kind of like Green Suns for. I guess we could just Green Suns for a Claimer. I think here we get Reclaimer, see if they try to attack into it. And then we have Crop Rotation for Bog before damage. Or, uh, sorry, for, for Depths. We can try to bait them by attacking with the Safekeeper as well. Okay. 
I guess now they can throw. They don't? Oh my gosh. I thought they would have thrown in response. Oh, you little legend. Okay. Wow, I really thought they would have thrown in response. Because that plays around, I guess, like, Sejuri Step, they might have thought, oh, if they get Sejuri Step, they can then just uh, respond to the trigger of Sejuri Step. Okay, the Paths, I don't mind. The Force of Vigors, I don't mind. It's probably it. Like, I don't think Oof is good enough. Uh, we really want to go pretty turbo on the combo, so I don't mind all of all of that. Shadow Spear is actually quite nice. Safekeeper can come out. The reflexes are probably just not good enough. The once is interesting. They do allow us to dig potentially for a basic. Caracas can come out. Uh, Endurance and Ramanat are usually just too slow. That's 60, so I think we just go with that. Reflexes is a removal spell. It is also a bit of uh, utility with both Knight and Reclaimer. Getting, um, obviously, two activations, which is nice. Maybe a surprise blocker as well. Could trim Bog. Yes, that's very true. I think in that case, we'll bring in the Oof. Because if they're playing Chrome Mox, it could be there. If they're playing Fable, it obviously hits their mana. It does hit our Mox Diamonds, but typically we can set it up to to get there, hopefully. Ah, uh, Saga as well. Yeah, Saga's a little bit suspect with uh, Magus. Magus has seen a, a fair bit more play, which is why I, I typically like Dismember in the board as like a nice clean way to answer it, no matter what you have in play in terms of color. Hey, Rick, welcome. Oh. We will be mulliganing this hand. Okay. Uh, we're going to keep this. I think it's the knight we're going to drop. If they have a chalice, it's a little, little bit rough. But if they have a chalice, they have a chalice. We have a lot of outs to that as well with force. Blood moon. Okay. Um, that is fine. Sons. Okay. Um, so the, the thought here is we can hold on the once for as long as possible to try to dig as deep as we can for the basic. I don't mind that. The other thing is like find the basic off the once and then play Reclaimer. I think we're just going to play the stage here and pass. Cast it. I guess we're getting that deep anyway. Okay. Well, one nice thing there is that no force of vigor went to the bin, so. Surely they have another play. Surely it's not just. Okay. Unlicensed us. Interesting. That runs into Force of Vigor, which is good for us. Threat? Okay. There's like a three turn clock. It's funny to be like a two turn clock. It has to be force of bigger. It has to be force of bigger. No. Tough. Because we could force 
and then pitch step for Yav and then pitch this for Dark Depths. We're just going to run this back. Okay. Pretty happy with this. I think it's just going to be turn one, Mox pitch Sav, play Green Suns for Elvish Reclaimer turn one. They're probably playing Dead Gone. Hmm. Yeah. Flagstones, cast Mox, pitch the Savannah. And then turn two, we hopefully have Reclaimer and Wasteland. If they play like turn one moon, we have Liberator hold up and then use Flagstones to get Depths and then blow up the moon. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Interesting. Hmm. Blowing out the movement is always funny, yeah. So I, I don't want to play into Fury where we have to pop the Liberator. So I think here I actually like just playing out the Wasteland. Holding up Reclaimer to go and find Depths? No. No, I, I do like playing the Liberator. Because then we can just take out the Chrome Mox potentially if we want it. Null Rod. Okay. That's fine. That turns off the Chrome Mox. And we still have access to two plus Bajuka Bog to deal with the Blood Moon, so this is actually fine. So we play the Beseju. Uh, and then we probably find Depths now. So they can't respond by dealing with the Liberator with something like a dead gone. We can flip the Liberator. Now if they try to play another moon effect of like a Simeon Spirit Guide, but yeah, I think that's pretty tough for them. Nice. We got the trophy, which is kind of cool. A lot of a lot of different lines with this sort of version, but very cool to be on the trophy board. Doesn't typically happen. Um, so that's really cool. A good lot of decks as well. Like we played against, obviously Moon Stompy, Lands. Moon Stompy, Lands, uh, Black Red Scam, uh, Sneak and Show, and one more. 
Moon Stompy, Lambs, Black Red Scam, Sneak and Show. I'm trying to think. Bales, we didn't bring in the Chasm, Torpor Orb, no. What was the fifth one? I actually can't remember. But yeah, obviously deck was sweet. I think there's a lot of plays where like we we fumbled, but to stay in there as like a non-blue deck, I think definitely shows a lot to the build of the deck, which is nice to see. Um, so yeah, big thank you to, for Jono for that. Uh, but that's gonna be me. I'm gonna enjoy my Sunday. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Uh, I'm gonna see who else is streaming. It looks like Caleb is. So I'll send you guys over there. A big thank you to Mark as well for uh, the raid, of course. If you want to find me, you can find me via Twitter, YouTube, where a new Maverick League went live last night, and then of course, on the greensunsenf.com. See you guys.